Hey guys, I'm Lynn Hansen. I'm one of the pastors here at North Park Church and super glad to be sharing with you in your life groups this week. We're talking about heroes and villains. We're going through some Old Testament stories. But uh, what I want to share with you up front is uh, this Galatians 5.17 verse. It says, The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is the opposite from what the Spirit wants. And so there's a hero and a villain in each one of us. And you know, the truth is that while God wants to bring the hero out in us, you know, there's a nature inside of us that's wanting to keep it in, wanting to keep the, the hero from emerging, wanting our own way, wanting our own selfish desires. And so, you know, more often than not, I think the reason that we do not follow God's Spirit is that we listen more to the world than we listen to God. We're more concerned with what uh, uh, the world wants than what it is that God wants. And so that sin nature uh, kind of owns us and kind of tells us what to do. Our fears control us. Our concerns control us. The things that we chase after control us. Well, Noah was a guy in the Old Testament uh, uh, from uh, Genesis chapter 6, very early on in the Old Testament, that really stepped out of that and began to, uh, you know, live a different kind of life. And it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, just kind of a capsule of Noah, it says, It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. <clears throat> and so we know that when we step outside the norm, and we actually start walking in the Spirit in this world, that it kind of does go against uh, what the world does and how they think. And, and the problem is that, you know, it often causes them to feel uh, condemned, right? And so we don't condemn the world. The world has condemned itself. And, and yet, if we live as righteous people, they often have a sense that we've condemned them. And so we live at odds uh, with them. Now, the story that uh, we're going to use tonight is, uh, or in our life groups this week, excuse me, is Genesis 6 verses 12 to 22. And I'm going to read that. Listen very carefully because somebody's going to step up from your group after uh, I finish reading and try to retell that story from memory as best they can. Everybody else will add in what it is they might have missed and uh, you'll rebuild that story then and we'll, we'll start to understand the story and let the Holy Spirit really work in our groups. So here we go. God observed all this corruption in the world for everyone on earth was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living things, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth, build a large boat from cypress wood, and waterproof it with tar inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior, make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high, leave an 18-inch opening uh, below the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build three decks inside the boat, lower, middle, and upper. Look, I am about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die, but I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, and you and your wife and sons and their wives." Bring a pair of every kind of animal, a male and a female, into the boat with you to keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bird, every animal, every kind of animal, every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. And be sure to take on board enough food for your family and all the animals. So Noah did everything exactly as the Lord commanded him. All right, somebody go ahead and, and try to retell that story. Afterward, uh, everybody else rebuild the story. Enjoy this process. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Go ahead and do that now. <clears throat> Well, let's go through some discussion questions now. Are you ready? Uh, the first question that we want to think about is this. Uh, let's take it to a personal level to start with. What is the most difficult 
or countercultural, unpopular thing that God has ever asked you to do. All right, think about that, pray about it a moment, and share with your group, would you please? Well, question two, uh, look back at verse 22, if you would please, for a moment. And notice that it says that Noah did everything exactly as God commanded him. Now, this is a big job that God has asked him to do, and, and he's done everything that God asked him to do. What do you think might have been the greatest challenge, the, the most difficult thing about believing and doing God's will for Noah? What do you think it was? What do you think some of the things were that were big challenges to doing God's will? Go ahead and talk that over. Pray about it a moment. Let the Holy Spirit teach you something here and uh, share, would you please? All right, well, thinking about a much bigger picture for question three now, uh, we're going to take the story of Noah, and uh, we're going to think about the application in our lives and, and what the story really means uh, to us. Uh, letting the Holy Spirit speak now, letting the Holy Spirit teach you something. Question three, what are some things in God's Word, the whole counsel of God, uh, Genesis to Revelation, what are some things in God's Word that go against the grain of the world that we live in, and, and because it goes against the grain, because it's very countercultural, you struggle with believing it and doing it. What are some of those things? What are some of the teachings of Jesus? Maybe, maybe the teachings of Paul. What are, what are some of the things that really uh, are, are a struggle for you to, to do and uh, to, to believe and then to do uh, in this culture? Go ahead and, and pray about that a moment and uh, discuss it, would you please? Well, question number four is a big, wide-open question that you're going to have to really seek God to kind of get an understanding of, uh, to, to get an answer for. Uh, it's as simple as this. What could you learn from Noah? So you look at Noah's life. You look at, um, well, we have Hebrews 11 here, and we have Genesis 6 here on your outline. What could you learn from Noah? Uh, pray about that a moment, and... Uh, Maybe share with your group what you could learn from Noah. All right, and question number five is your takeaway question, as always. Question five is, uh, what does God want you to take away from your life group this week? What is it that he wants you to get a hold of? What's the big idea that he wants you to walk away with? Now make sure that you get the big idea so that you can process this and really be praying about it and put it to work in your life this week. All right? What is the big thing that God wants you to get a hold of? Well, guys, that's your life group. What an opportunity. Hear me, please. What an opportunity you have. Do you even know the opportunity that you have in your life groups? Leaders, lead. Uh, guys, I mean, just dig in. Let God speak to you. Just grow up in your life groups. This is an opportunity. And uh, be blessed by it, okay? We'll see you soon.